I have 701. So at this time, I'm going to welcome everybody to the North Coventry Township Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, on the call here this evening is myself, Jim Marks. I serve as chairman of the board. Uh, Rick Sheeler, who is vice chairman. Spencer Claypool and Rebecca Elliott are also uh, with us on this call tonight, two board members. Our township manager, Eric Badorf is here, as well as Dan Sager, our township solicitor. So at this time, um, I call the meeting to order and the board, you have the meeting minutes from February 8th. Do I have any comments or corrections on the meeting minutes? No. I'm good with them. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of February 8th, 2021? So, so moved. Move. Rebecca makes the motion, Spencer seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the bills are approved. Bills will appear online, um, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, or the minutes, I should say. Uh, bills, we have unpaid bills totaling $46,551. Since our last meeting, we have a list of paid bills and payroll totaling $134,330. Do I have any comments or questions on the bills? Hearing none, do I have any comments or questions from the public? These bills were appeared on the township website uh, over the weekend. If anybody has any comments or questions on what's all on those bills, please unmute yourself and ask your question now. Hearing none, do I have a motion to pay the $46,551 and uh, acknowledge the paid bills and payroll of $134,330? So move. Rick makes the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Spencer seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the bills are approved and acknowledged. Developers bills. Do I have any comments or questions on the developers bills? Erica, do you want to bring us up to date on the um, Bentley outstanding balance? Sure. Um, to date, I have um, I have the. Uh, payment of fees for the legal services uh, from Mr. Bentley, and he is currently working with LTL Consulting to uh, work through um, his appeal, essentially, of uh, some of the fees uh, involved with his subdivision plans. <clears throat> but as of today, he is, uh, he is caught up on legal. Okay. Any other comments or questions on developers' bills? All right. Hearing nothing, we're going to move on to subdivision and land development. We do um, uh, have a application for a zoning hearing um, by the applicant and Mr. Fox, you are on the call, I believe. Uh, yes, Mr. Marks. Okay, why don't you give us a over a summary of what your client is proposing? Sure. And uh, with with me this evening uh, is Rich Hassan, uh, Vice President with American Heritage Federal Credit Union. And we also have a representative, Matt Mazella, of our engineering firm, uh, Dynamic Engineering. My client is American Heritage Federal Credit Union, uh, who has a property under agreement, uh, which is an uh, what we hope to create as an out parcel uh, at the Coventry Mall, located at 351 West Schuylkill Road. Um, this is the uh, current or former um, First National Bank. And we would like to obtain uh, three variances for this proposed parcel and one overall variance uh, to subdivide this parcel and create a, a free uh, freestanding um, uh, piece of property so that uh, American Heritage can own, own the dirt that it's on. Uh, this would also, uh, Rich, correct me if I'm wrong, we're currently in Stowe, uh, just off of 422. And uh, this would be a replacement in a more uh, more visible, uh, higher traffic uh, location that we would uh, we'd like to utilize uh, utilize as a, a new branch new branch location. Um, That's correct. Great. And uh, the three variances at issue: um, one is to permit uh, an impervious surface ratio um, of eighty one point three percent, which those more than seventy percent. Uh, 
as uh, is, is the limit, but this is actually a, a reduction of uh, the overall parcel. Uh, rear yard setback from uh, 25 feet to 18.4 feet and uh, some other minor dimensional relief as to require building setback dimensions due to the, uh, the shape of the uh, lot and the location of the existing building. Um, it's uh, very important for American Heritage because they make an investment and a long-term commitment to being in locations, um, to be able to own the ground and uh, for lack of a better word, stand, stand on their own two feet um, and uh, be able to control, control their own destiny. Um, so having the capability um, to invest in this location and subdivide the parcel is, is incredibly important. And uh, we, if, we, if we'd ask for your support, but at a minimum ask that our application not be opposed um, before, the, uh, before the zoning hearing board. And we're, we're happy to answer any questions or if anyone's unfamiliar with American Heritage, uh, we're happy to, happy to tell you anything you wanna know. Is this your first um, uh, credit union in Chester County? Yes. So, and currently you're in you're in Bucks, Montgomery, uh, Philadelphia, South Jersey, um, and looking looking to branch out um, from there. Is that correct? Yes, and including Delaware County. We're also in Delaware County. Okay, thank you. A um, couple of questions I have, and I'm going to ask our solicitor to weigh in here. Um, what does the subdivision, how does the subdivision impact the conditional use that the mall has for that parcel? Well, that's, that's part, I think that's why they're asking for the variance. Are you not? That's part of what you're, the use, because you need to, so they, they're asking to subdivide. Are you, the first step you need is you need approval for the township as to whether they're willing to agree to the subdivision. Before you get to the step of the variance, um, because the township may not be inclined because of, we've had this back and forth with them all for a while now. Um, um, they're not necessarily inclined in doing subdivision piecemeal. That's what's happening. Um, now I get what you're, what you're saying and, it, and it's dealing with the bank, but um, I think the township would want a little bit more commitment from Coventry Mall as to what their plans are generally because I don't think they want to a, 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 a subdivide constantly. That's what I think they're foreseeing. And that's my concern that they're just going to keep cutting out parcels to the to the mall. We have a conditional use to, to non-conforming conditional use and you start breaking that up and all the conditions from that conditional use are now separate owners, separate parcels, and I don't know how that how that impacts everything. Um, does it does it make sense to have a, a staff meeting on this? Dan, what's your thought? Well, I, I think it it would make sense to have a staff meeting if you want to, if you were going to bring in the Coventry Mall for an overall understanding of what's going to happen. And, and then Nate's client could be part of it too. So there's an understanding of what maybe the use is. But um, if you're not inclined to subdivide this particular plot because of what we're talking about, which I do think it, I would, I, I do suggest you should have some concerns. Um, I'm not so sure that a staff meeting is going to be that productive. What, and so Mr. Sager, what, what concerns uh, should, should we have? Just... Well, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that, and I'm not going to speak for the board, but I don't think the board has an issue necessarily with the use. It's the fact that the conditional use, there's certain, um, if you look at um, the plot there, it, it usurped, there's a couple different right, rights are, uh, that were conditional. And what I think the township is concerned about is if you have that or what used to be what I think it's now the um, uh, the tile carpet place uh, used to be a, a supermarket. You have that as a separate uh, plot where the, where the main parcel is, is a separate plot where Sears used to be and now Gabe's is there. That's a, that was a separate plot. 
So for now we're dealing with piecemeal. And the next thing you know, they, the, the, the potential developer, and it's not your client, but a, maybe a bigger a developer who wants to deal with is their concern is that it may be, well, we can't use this use anymore as a mall and we're piecemealing the subdivision. Now we're using it for different kinds of uses within the um, ordinance, which is not really what they want. So they were inclined before to talk about an overall use of the Coventry Mall because there was some discussion about that. And that, that's part of it, what your use is. I don't think they're necessarily against that, but they want an overall plan of what this Coventry Mall plot is gonna be going forward. Yeah, and I mean, and I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're no, we're we're ha we're happy to we're happy to meet, confer, discuss, um, and for, forgive me. And I, our our thinking is that this is in this in the C one zoning district. Um, it's a parcel that is if if created, if the township certainly was agreeable to it, it's it, it's it's a use that regardless of what would happen with the Coventry Mall going forward. We're pretty innocuous. Some of our locations are right adjacent to residential development or right in a commercial corridor um, or a combination of those two things. We're hopeful that a use like this would be something that is workable no matter what the future would hold. It's not you. I think they're fine with the use. If you are, I'm, I'm again, not speaking with the, but Understood. you're right. That, that's not the issue. The issue is what happens if the, you're not necessarily there for, uh, as as indefinitely as you hope to be what happens if the other now we have other we're creating precedent that we're starting to subdivide the, the various plots the use itself i don't think the township necessarily is going to have that be adverse to your use in fact they're probably going to encourage you to be using that's, that's not i think their issue that and that's true we're i'm worried about what happens when the next person comes in and they start dividing this into much smaller parcels. I mean, that is my my concern. Um, I'm just weary of this path of that we're going down. You're used to the bank, you know, I, I, I probably speak for the others. I think we have no problem with the use. We're just worried about where this goes um, going forward and the precedent that we're that we're setting here. Any other board members have comment? Well, the last time we met with the, the mall owners, you know, we had talked about having a master plan as what was just described going forward. And just to avoid this type of situation, it's not something we've seen or even been discussed. So, you know, I, I will certainly uh, go along with what Jim just said. I, I certainly wouldn't oppose the bank. Um, just, I would like to know what's what's going forward with the mall in, it, in its entirety, you know, with the entire property, and not just to carve out a piece whenever it deems uh, feasible for the mall owners. May may I may I offer a, a thought and a a suggestion? Sure. So part of our, I think everyone I think is speaking around the the uncertainty relative to brick and mortar uh, retail um, and the financial wherewithal, um, whether it's whether it's the Coventry Mall owners, whether it's the Simon Property Group for their holdings other than King of Prussia Mall or, or you name it. Um, our, our concern is just that regardless of whether it's the, the owners of the Coventry Mall or anybody else, I don't, I personally don't know who's out there and I don't know that my client knows who's out there um, that they're, that could undertake a, a master plan like that successfully. Um, but our, our hope again, and I apologize if I'm repeating myself, our hope is that regardless, I hopefully see that this, this use at this location in a former bank building, um, re regardless of what happens with any master plan, it could easily be developed around us. And I, I completely understand the, the concerns about um, what, what position this might put the property in, but that's our, our hope was that, you know, that for, for this specific user at this location, um, it's something that could work, work regardless. 
Well, to, to me, you, you, can, you can already use that plot for a bank. You, you're just, you, you only need the variance in the sub because you want to subdivide. You can put a bank there without, it, without, without the TIP board's uh, approval or not. That's, that's certainly a use that you can put there. You, you want to own the lot and that's your financial uh, decision. The use itself can be put in there right now. Maybe there's a way of dealing with it uh, as your business plan, where you can put you have the use and and deal with it a different way when the when the, the Coventry Mall has a better understanding of what they want to do with their plot. So and and Mr. Sager, do I understand this? Is just different from what I'm what I'm used to. We're used to before a subdivision's approved, having to nail down the uh, the zoning variances. Are you, would you prefer us? if we were to try and continue on this path to file an application for subdivision approval um, and see if we can come to come to some understanding or alleviate folks' concerns? You can do that. I don't think that that's what you're hearing though, that necessarily they, they want to deal with it that way, I'm hearing. Okay, that's, your variance isn't the issue is what they're trying to tell you. Um, I maybe you need to be a little bit forthright as to why you have to own the property as opposed to just using the property. And I think the Coventry Mall needs to be a little bit more forthright as to why they want to do this too. Because to, to me, as a business sense, it doesn't necessarily equate that I need to own the plot in order to have a credit union or bank on, my, on the property. In fact, it may make sense not to own the plot so I think that's the issue that they may have. I know it sounds like you do that. That's what you, you have with your, so I'm not saying that that's, there's something else going on. I, I think that they need to understand and they also need to understand from the Coventry Mall that this isn't happening. This is, this is not a surprise to them is what I, we're, you're hearing. Understood, Rich, did you wanna to respond to anything or have anything? Uh... I'd, I'd like to have more discussion with them all. Yeah, yeah. understood. And revisit okay. this. All right. I think yeah. we have a uh, plan forward. So you can um, reach out to the mall. And if you have questions, you can direct them to our manager and solicitor and um, take it from there. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having us tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, is Thank there, you. Erica, is, Erica, is there anything we need to do in regard to the zoning application? No, uh, acknowledge receipt and we can go from there and I can coordinate with the applicant further on what they wish to do to proceed. Okay, all right. So we have, I assume we have acknowledged receipt of it and- uh, Well, you may want to make a sit determination as to what you want to do with it if they do want to go forward with the variance. If they, they still theoretically have a variance application out there. Um, it doesn't have to be contingent on a subject. That's the ultimate next step. But. They may decide they want to continue with the variance, though, for their purpose. The thing I would do is have our solicitor appear at the hearing. Um, I think that would be a, an appropriate step so we can make sure it goes um, in the direction we're expecting at the time of the hearing. Well, I think you, that you can make, you can make it a, a couple of ways. You could have me appear just to, uh, as a party to intervene just to see where it's going with it and with the understanding of what we're just discussing. You can take a position, you could take no position. You don't have to take a position, even if I'm present. I, I mean, in regard to the what they're asking for in the zoning variance, uh, I have no problem with the, the, what they're asking for as far as setbacks and things like that. It's strictly, my concern strictly is the ownership issue and the subdivision issue. So if it's going forward, um, as not a subdivision, and I have really no no issues with it. I don't know if any of the other board members do. Um, well, I uh, certainly don't. I would encourage to to get the building occupied and, and get some business into the area. Right. I'd be more encouraging. Um, but again, it you know my uh, feeling just goes back to. The overall use of the property, certainly not with what uh, 
the party tonight wants to do with it. And so, Dan, if it goes through a subdivision, does it have to go to our planning commission? It would go to planning yeah. commission mm -hmm. and LCL yeah. and they'd mm -hmm. have to address stormwater issues. Sure. Um, and all of those things, which is gonna have pretty significant cost and time involved. Um, which has a bearing on one of their variances as well. That's the other issue that they, so they may want to just pass a little bit, have LTL review, et cetera. I mean, that's the other aspect that you have if you're going to go forward with the variance, but we can't tell them not to. Right. I, I think if, 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 okay, Mr. Sager, I'd, I'd like to give you a call and talk, uh, talk through this and just make sure, sure we've. It sounds like there's definitely some history, and we've got to talk to our uh, our seller as well. And we don't we don't want to take up. Uh, yeah, you, you have you have other stuff to talk about tonight, other than a, uh, a zoning no application. I I don't want to I don't want to take up too much more of anybody's time unless you you want us to keep going. Okay, so Dan, at this point, can we just table this matter until the next meeting? When, when's the zoning? Do you have a date, Mr. Fox, for the zoning hearing? I, I don't know. Eric and I had had talked about that over email, but I mean, we're. When was the application we, made? It was it just was, made. Yeah, oh, last so, week. Last so, week. So, so do you don't mind days. if we make it beyond the next meeting? So at least we, you and I have an opportunity to discuss. If we have Perfect. to do the zoning matter, well, it'll, it could Perfect. be after the next meeting. Okay. Perfectly fine. Okay. You got you know you got sixty days to schedule us anyway. Very good. Okay. So for right now, we are going to table this matter and revisit at a future time. So thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you. Thank, thank you very you much. Joining, joining thank us you. here tonight. Thank Have a good you. evening. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you for filling us in. You're welcome. Okay. We're going to move on to new business. I understand. Matt, are you on? Matt was having trouble yeah. with his audio. You there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, 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 I got okay. you. And see okay, you guy. Um, so uh, our chief, uh, our new chief is um, put a memo in the packet to the board um, proposing, and this is something we addressed during the budget process back at the, uh, uh, in November and December, the promotion of a, one of our part-time officers to the full-time, a full-time position that officer is Andrew Templin. Uh, Matt, you wanna say something? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, officer Templin has been uh, working with us part-time since uh, April of last year. Um, and since that time, he has uh, gone through our FTO program and uh, has been out on the street uh, handling calls uh, since then. And uh, he's proven himself uh, uh, very dependable and uh, dedicated uh, to his uh, to his job and uh, to North Coventry, um, and uh, with uh, Corporal Holiday uh, coming up to his uh, uh, superannuation date uh, this beginning March, um, and his uh, uh, opportunity to uh, go into the drop program, uh, we felt it was a, a good decision to uh, bring on a full time person uh, so that we would have somebody ready to go when uh, Corporal Holiday does eventually. Uh, uh, leave our department. So uh, that was the re reason for the request um, in order to fill that uh, that uh, opening that's going to happen here um, at some point in time in the near future. Okay. Any questions from the board? No. No. Um, so I'm looking for a motion at this time to approve the promotion of Officer Andrew Templin to a full-time position. Uh, salary is determined by the collective bargaining agreement. He'll be brought in as a new hire, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so do I have a motion to that effect? Uh, Jim? Yes. Uh, just, just, so, just so you know, it, it will happen uh, March 8th. Okay, effective. So we can make that effective March 8th. That's correct. Thanks, man. We also want to include in the motion to replace the part-time position um, authorized as well. Not at this time. Is that my understanding? We're going to review that in the near That's future? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, we're tabling that for now, but we will visit that in the in the future. Okay. Well, I'll make so a, motion. a motion. Spencer makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. 
I think I heard Rick in there and second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And the motion passes and congrats to, to Andrew. I was looking forward to him going full time on, on March 8th. Um, is, how will his schedule change? How many hours has he been working now? Uh, he's been working uh, 32 hours uh, since his uh, uh, beginning of last uh, last April. So uh, his hours will bump up a little bit, but obviously uh, the benefits will, will be there for him now as well. Right, right. All right, very good. Thanks, Matt. You're welcome. Okay, next item on new business is the EAC's recommendation to upgrade uh, the subdivision and land development ordinance concerning the uh, native plant list. Uh, the EAC formed a committee a few months ago to work on a new um, native plant list. That plant list was in your packet. I hope you all read every line. Um, and so tonight, uh, John, John Worth is on. I believe he's on the call. He's our chairman of our EAC. John, do you have any uh, comments you want to make about the new um, plant list? Uh, not a lot. I mean, I, I really appreciate, Jim, that you referred to it as an upgrade, um, which I do think it is an upgrade. Uh, it's also an update, um, which really just reflects, you know, this is already in the saldo. Um, what we're talking about is just updating it, refreshing it a little bit. Um, and we're really lucky in that we've got a couple of uh, wonderful volunteers who have helped us with this. Um, you know, like Phoebe Robb, who's on the EAC, who is, you know, a certified uh, Pennsylvania master gardener, as well as a certified watershed steward. Um, you know, Corey Trago, one of our new members, and Jesse Schiffler, who is a volunteer on our uh, council, who has vast knowledge of native plants, and they've all worked very hard on this. So it doesn't really represent anything more than an update to reflect that the township would like to see developers planting plants that are native to our area. Do I have any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? So the process for this is um, looking for a motion to authorize the review of the proposed native plant list. And that review includes uh, being sent to Planning Commission and Parks and Rec. Is there anybody else, Erica, who needs to, to review it? Possibly Chester County um, oh. for our um, review pursuant to changing part of our subdivision land development ordinance. Um, but other than that, that's, I think, would be all inclusive. And now LTL will get it through the yes. Planning Commission review? Okay. Correct. All right, so at this time we're just looking for a motion to authorize the review of the proposed native plant list amendment uh, to the saldo. Do I have that motion? So moved. Rebecca makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Spencer seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, John, we're a step closer. Great, thanks. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. And thank your volunteers for it was a lot of work, a ton of work, a ton of it research was. done. It was. I, hope, I hope people appreciate that the new list will actually include a little more information for uh, both residents as well as developers about the plants and where, where they can be used and things like a little more information. Yep, well, very good, thank you. All right, administration supervisors reports, Rebecca. Do you have anything this evening? I don't have anything new, but once again, I want to thank the uh, road crew. We've had a lot of snowy days and they're out there all the time. So thank you very much. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Rick, do you have anything this evening? Uh, the one thing I would ask is that if Erica could contact our representative with PennDOT on two different items is, uh, it seems like they stopped plowing it on 724 at Catfish Lane and do not continue out to the Chester Burks County line. So that stretch one mile or mile and a half stretch of road never gets plowed or solid. And the other thing is what we're all gonna be experiencing here in the next month or two are potholes. And I noticed on uh, Laurelwood Road heading out towards 100, there's some developing pretty nasty potholes. 
And uh, I know it's a little early and they're probably going to, you know, say it's not time yet, but we can't, you know, it's just going to let them grow and more, more cars get damaged. So I would ask that, you know, those two items be addressed with PennDOT. Okay. Will do. Thank you. E Erica, I, I was going to give them a call tomorrow regarding 724 because we had issues out there today, again, uh, as well as uh, up at the, 422 and 100 interchange. So I'm going to address it with them if, if you want me to do it. Uh, that would be great. Thank you, Chief. Rick, anything else? No, that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Spencer, do you have anything? Uh, no, not this evening. Okay. And I have nothing this evening. Uh, Erica, yeah. manager's report. Thank you. Um, I would uh, just want to report DEP uh, is actually uh, ahead with the recycling performance reports for the previous year. The township received our grant award payment for 2019 recycling numbers. And we had received about $1,700 more than previous years. And that's due to an increase in residential recycling. So that's great. Um, want to continue on that trend uh, as we receive more performance grant funds to the township. A uh, financial overview for the township. We're in our first uh, completed uh, month of the year for 2021. And we have reviewed our budget performance reports, real estate and per capita tax bills go out March 1st. So this is that time period where the first quarter, we're gonna see the expenses going through and uh, the revenues on that side will pick up in the second quarter. So right now the general fund expenses exceed the income received. Otherwise, the budget numbers are in line um, and on track right now for that uh, performance period. But we just wanted to remind, um, we have a, a tax collector notice on the website with our tax collection due dates. And if there's any information that um, any residents need to have updated, uh, we want to try and be proactive with that, um, given everything going on with uh, the world and COVID, et cetera. So that is uh, more pronounced. We'll try to get some updates out about that. That's my report. Very good, thank you thank very you. much. Dan, solicitor report. Uh, the only thing is, um, well, I, as I informed the board uh, on Tripodi, su surprise, surprise, the Commonwealth Court did grant the stay until the appeal process and then we can make application. Uh, Tripodi's uh, brief is due literally tomorrow. As of this evening, they have not filed a brief. Um, which again, surprise, surprise, it's always at the last minute. I assume I will receive it tomorrow. And then our uh, brief is due within, uh, I think it's 20 days, but it's complete now. It'll be filed. And then hopefully we get a fast decision and I can make application and go forward with that. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Before we go to public comment, I'm just going to do, Ooh. I see based on the names here, we have pretty much all of our boards and commissions are represented. Just like to go through real quick, see if I can get any updates. Starting with Bill Sumas. Bill's our uh, planning commission chairman. He's also the chairman of the Potsdam Metropolitan Regional Planning Commission. Bill, can you give us an update on either, either planning commission? Well, uh, as you can, uh, as you do know already, it's been pretty quiet. So there's not much going on. I do have uh, been in contact with the, the Chester Planning uh, Commission planning group, and uh, I'm setting up a, an educational or tutorial for April regarding overlays and, and just to get the board or the planning commission up to speed on what they are how they're used and uh, what they're used for. Uh, while it's been quiet, uh, the plan is for our planning commission for North Coventry Township anyway, is to invite some guest speakers to the monthly meetings to, to get people a little bit more insight as to what uh, is available as a planning tool and what we can do going forward when uh, confronted with uh, certain uh, things that people have requests for. That's all I have, Jim. All right. Thank you, Bill. Uh, John Worth, EAC Chairman. Um, John, any updates? You want to give an update on the uh, webinar series? Oh, yeah, I'd be happy to, Jim. So, yes, we are um, in, the, in the midst of our second uh, series of educational webinars that we've been putting on. 
Um, we've done the first two of a series of, I believe, five. Um, and our next one is coming up uh, on, I believe it's March 10th. Um, and it's going to be given by one of our EAC members, uh, Justin Schiffler, about pollinators and honeybees. Um, and then one other question, and this pertains, Erica, to your uh, comment about the recycling um, and the grant that we recently got from DEP. As you know, the EAC is thinking about, actually not thinking about, we are, we are going to be signing up for a program through the Trex Corporation where we can collect and recycle plastic film. Now that's an item that normally cannot be collected curbside. Um, if we collect 500 pounds of plastic film recyclables, we actually earn a free park bench. <laughs> that was kind of the motivation, but I'm wondering, Erica, if that could also count towards the township's total recycling and perhaps you know, improve our numbers in that regard as well. Good observation. I, I will make a note of that. We'll check into that. Thank you. Okay, because we will be tracking the, the weight of everything collected as part of the TREX program. Right. All right, well, yeah, let me know, thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Edie Sheen Hammond, our newest uh, chairman, uh, chairman of the Open Space Review uh, Board. Edie, do you have anything you want to share? Um, I think there are a couple of things that are of, of interest, um, and that is that we're moving ahead to look at um, the right of way for uh, Coventry Trail and working with PICO, PICO has responded to us um, and they've sent our maps on um, to their lead engineer and we're waiting for um, a more thorough application process. Um, I think it's worthwhile to take a look at uh, Chester County's draft climate action plan. Um, there is a Zoom meeting scheduled March 4th um, and there is a great deal of interest in um, its forest legacy, um, the um, desire to plant lots of trees in that climate action plan. So take a look at it if you can. I set it forward um, in terms of um, the, the site that you can access it. Um, and we have people interested in serving, on, serving, which is great. We've got some really qualified candidates. So um, if it's okay, I could ask Chris if he had anything more to, to add. Chris Washburn, our former chair person. Chris, you have anything you want to add? <laughs> no, I think uh, Edie covered it. And uh, uh, the, uh, I guess we've had the first advertising for uh, vacancy positions and it's going to be advertised once more with a meeting on March 22nd, I believe. Very good. Thanks, Chris. Edie, no, no meeting this month, correct? That is correct. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you, Edie. Uh, Parks and Rec, I see we have Vince, and I don't know if Patty's on this call or not, Patty Worth, but Vince, do you have anything you want to share? I'm here. Oh, <laughs> hi, <good>. Patty. <laughs> Either one of you, or both, are welcome to share anything what's going on with Parks and Rec. Uh, there are, thanks Jim, there are um, a lot of kind of balls in the air, uh, things moving forward, but the one thing I think I would like to point out to the township residents is that uh, we do have a, a, a number of geocaches that are set up in township parks, there are actually 25 of them, and I don't think that that's something that is, is uh, well known, so we are in the process of trying to make information on the geocaches and how to uh, utilize those as, as a recreational outlet available to residents. Uh, the only uh, board I skipped over here is Historical Commission. Spence, what's going on with Historical Commission? Uh, well, we've been keeping in touch uh, the members by telephone. Um, we get requests almost weekly uh, for people uh, interested in a particular historical concern that they may have either with in their own family or just in general uh, about one of our recently 
uh, churches wanted some information. And um, I've been working on a couple articles for the township newsletter. Uh, but uh, like I say, we, we keep in touch by telephone. That, all right. That's all. Thank you, Spencer. Er Erica, what's the plan for the newsletter? What's the time frame? Um, I am collecting articles by, uh, well, we're almost getting the end of the month here. So um, beginning of March, and then uh, we'll be looking at a spring summer issue and hopefully April to be distributed. So Very that's good. my goal. So all, any uh, ideas and content uh, the next few weeks would be great. Very good, thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is public comment. This is the portion of the meeting where the public gets to comment. If you have such comment you'd like to offer, um, please unmute yourself, identify yourself, and uh, make your comment. Just uh, just a note: um, public comments can, are can be will be accepted also through email prior to our meeting. So if you have a public comment in the future, you you're welcome to email that to Erica prior to the meeting. Um, please before 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting and we can address it during the public comment portion of this meeting. So if anybody does have a public comment at this time, I'd ask for you to speak up. Uh, Jim, uh, I, there were uh, two things. Uh, one, I was just uh, wondering if uh, if the police department could get a, uh, a list of locations for those geocache locations here in the township, just so we're aware of them. Um, and then the second, thing I wanted to mention was um, just real briefly it's coming out in the newsletter as well but uh, we, we just started um, a new uh, program uh, dealing with camera registry with our police department uh, we're looking for um, uh, residents and businesses in a township to uh, to uh, volunteer uh, to give information uh, to the police department uh, regarding any cameras that they may have that uh, face outdoors and and we're looking to just uh, set up a uh, a location where we would we would be able to know where cameras are around the township in case uh, a crime was committed in that area. We would have a list of uh, residents or businesses um, that have cameras, and they may have uh, seen and recorded something that uh, is useful for us. So if if uh, anybody is interested in being a part of that, it is a uh, strictly a uh, voluntary to do it um, they can go on our website it's the North Coventry Police Department website on crime, uh, crime watch um, and there's a section there you'll see for for forms and underneath that uh, drop down will be the camera registry um, and uh, you, you'll be able to put your information in there um, it, it's something that we would uh, uh, th there are terms listed on that so you'll see what it's all entails um, but the one thing I do want to make uh, sure everyone knows is that it's not that uh, the police department would have any access to your camera system uh, other than um, just being able to reach out to you and just saying if uh, you know something may have been recorded that we might be interested in uh, knowing about. Okay, very good. And Matt, I believe the township has a list of all the uh, geocache. I think they're on file at the township. Erica, is that is that right? I think. Um, yes, we have a, a registration for that. Okay, so you can get that so to Matt. I can okay. get together. Great, thanks. Public comment. Anybody have anything they wish to share at this time? Hearing none. At this time, um, we have no uh, executive session this evening, so we've come to the end of the meeting tonight. I want to thank everybody for attending. I think we had 25 people at the peak um, appreciate everybody taking the time tonight to sign on and, uh, and check out what's going on uh, within our township. Hopefully we're at the end of this thing and we'll be back in a room um, with each other eventually, but uh, certainly appreciate everybody being here tonight. So at this time, I'm going to end the meeting. Have a good night, everybody. Good, good night. night everyone. Good night. Stay good warm night. and be glad you're not in Texas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got that right.